green hand is a biting horsefly. Wherever the salt marsh, anywhere in the United States, and in fact anywhere in the world, you can find greenhead flies. There's evidence that they've always been here. The uh, reports going back to the earliest, the settlers, the Native Americans and Native Indians to this area report the vicious flies that they encountered. I've read stories about uh, the farmers bringing horses out to hay the marshes, and the horses would have so many greenhead bites that they would actually drop dead and bleed to death from greenhead bites. And there's documentation on that, and that's how bad it used to be. There was such a nuisance level in the mid-60s, 67, 68, where it was almost impossible to uh, use recreational areas. Uh, the, even there in downtown Ipswich, there was a lot of interest in trying to do something about it. Many years ago, we ruled out any kind of chemical applications because the concentrations would have to be so strong they would be detrimental to a lot of other species on the marsh. When uh, we started in 1966, we were sighted with a box trap from uh, out in the western part of Canada, which looked very much like a table. And in the middle of the table had been cut a square with some screening, brought to a point, and then a jar was picked over the top of that. It was picking up some green heads from that area, and that intrigued us that uh, something would uh, work in such a way as to, to sort of contain them, to hold them. Even though we knew our automobiles would, if we opened our windows to the automobiles, the insects would fly to our car and would locate inside of the, of the vehicle. So the first notion that came to mind was, could we make something practical that would work for Essex County on somewhat of a limited, uh, limited budget? So in 1966 and 67, I actually worked on traps which had some sort of uh, pyramid effect and some sort of collector at the top. And that was not a very good deal because we were getting flies to lay their eggs. It was just a big mush. And to have to take it off, and it started to block at the top. It started to smell gross. It was going to take a lot of tending. So the next step, of course, was just to, and this was by accident, put the screen over the top of the box. And the flies would come up under there. They were all coming underneath, but then they would leave at the end of the day. So they'd come up under, leave. So we tried different things underneath these traps. I had pyramids in there and we could get them up through, and they weren't going down. Now this was great, because we realized at that point that we weren't going to have to go around and take care of an old jar, and then we found something else which even excited us, I think, even to a greater extent. The predaceous insects and spiders would come in and clean them out. So theoretically, at the end of the summer, we were left with only the heads. So we had a device that didn't require maintenance. You put it out, beginning of the season, you take it up, you don't have to have people going around and servicing it.